website focused on the hunting dog breeds. If you're looking for quality information about pedigrees, health certifications, and performance in the field, Gun Dog Broker has what you're looking for. Log on today and see if your dog is gun dog worthy. All right, Mark, so we've seen uh, in, in the previous couple uh, pups that we've uh, worked with here, we've seen them, you know, come to the here, kennel, place, and then what we're, what we're about to do here, you said, was actually start to teach the retrieve portion of it. Can you talk to us a little bit about that, what that's going to look like, and how, since, I guess in your words, she's preconditioned to the clicker. She right. understands it. So how do you teach that concept of retrieve to the to her? Okay, well, uh, it varies from dog to dog. All of these puppies, the last couple of days, I've thrown two or three toy balls out that I've let them play with. And they've chased each other around, so it created a desire to have that ball. And some have more natural retrieve drive than others. Uh, this little puppy, I think, is going to be a little weak on starting her retrieve. So she's not going to help me, so I'm going to help her through the process. And what I'm going to do, just like we did earlier with targeting, except now the target's going to become the ball. Uh, every time I can get her nose to touch this little uh, fluffy ball, I'll click and treat. And what will happen is... Over time, you will see her first develop a consistency where she touches it every time she wants a treat. And then when I withhold giving her a treat, she's going to become more aggressive. She's frustrated because she didn't get one, and she's going to bump the ball harder. Mm -hmm. And when she does, I'll click and treat. And what happens is you will build that over time. Uh, and we were very, we'll be fortunate if she'll put her mouth on it today. Yeah. Uh, if she will just grab it one time with her mouth, that will be a, a high point for a training session. Uh, Mark, a, a question for you would be, have you seen this method? You know, we're talking about a retrieve. In a retriever world, we have a fetch, right? Um, which I'm sure you're familiar with. And so have you seen this concept to be able to teach a 12-week, 13, 14, 15-week-old dog the concept of, of fetch and to pick it up and, and to hold it? Uh, absolutely. And in my case, it was me. Uh, I had a good friend who's in the Bird Dog Hall of Fame, who's one of the greatest field trial setter trainers of all time, uh, who had the, I don't know what to call it, good fortune or bad fortune, depending on whose fortune it was. Uh, a dog that I had trained to retrieve for a, a dentist who was a good friend of mine, hunted with Harold Ray through a, an entire winter. And his dog that had been trained to retrieve at that point, part of it, was, most of them were force trained. Um, but that force trained dog picked up every bird that they shot over about 15 dogs. And at the end of the season, Harold called me and he said, Mark, you've cost me a lot of money. And I said, what'd I do? And he said, my clients want all of my dogs to retrieve like Dr. Saul's dog. <laughs> he said, how much is it gonna cost to train the dogs? And I said, well, how many do you have? And he said, well, I wanna bring six to start with. And I said, you do? And he said, yep. He said, five of them are litter mates. They're all six years old and there's a four year old pointer also. So all of a sudden I'm training dogs for one of the most famous trainers in the country, uh, one of the best field trial people there's ever been, and I've got his six-year-old reliable trained hunting dogs that I've got to teach to retrieve, and I'm terrified that I'm going to mess them up because they're Harold Ray's dogs. <laughs> yeah, right. So they come in and I started with them, and four of the dogs went through a traditional uh, train retrieve program with the uh, training table and the electric collar with no problem. But I had two of the six-year-old dogs, one named Comet and one named Judy, who would have nothing to do with any type of pressure. They just melted. So within a week, I switched both of those six-year-old dogs to clicker training. Yeah. And it took me about a week longer because I started a week late on those. But at the end of the training time, I carried on all six over to Harold. He couldn't tell who'd been trained with a clicker or who'd been trained With traditionally. And I didn't tell him for a while. And, and actually what was really fun was Comet, the male dog, I actually taught his dog how to get a horse uh, because once I had him trained to retrieve with the clicker, I actually just brought a bridle in and tied the reins in a knot and I taught that dog to target on the knot in the bridle reins. So I could say, get the horse and he would grab the reins. And, and he would the drag the reins so he learned to bring the horse back when you said get the reins. Oh, uh, I had a lot of fun doing that, and Harold 
who's always thought it was amazing that all of those six-year-old dogs learned to retrieve. Amazing. But I mean, I applied it to six-year-old trained dogs and it worked. Yeah. So, so clicker training is effective in early puppy, you know, seven to 12 weeks and, and right. on up through a six-year-old dog to teach a concept if you've got the patience. And, there, and what's, a, what's, you know, and we've talked a little bit about it, but what's some of the disadvantages to clicker training that you need to work around? Now, I don't know that I'd call it a disadvantage, but one of the problems that you have to look at is the fact that you are treat training. And there are lots of people that say you should never use a treat, doesn't have value. Uh, treats, when they're used as a bribe to get a dog to do something, they have very little power because you always have to have a bribe to get them to do it. Uh, with reinforcement training, when it's done right, you go through that process of a treat every time, then a treat on uh, variable reinforcement, right. and then you drop into random reinforcement, and eventually you have a dog that's responding to a known command without any treats at all. So it's a process of phasing out the need for treats on every command you teach. Now, the dog can know 15 commands without treats, but when you start teaching a new command, you go back to using those treats because it, it aids the learning process. It just makes it happier, makes it faster. That's neat. Well, I look forward to seeing seeing how we uh, get her working on here. Okay. So it'll be, be neat. Thank you.